Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. I have some very exciting news about PlayStation 3 emulation on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and we now have a build that is much faster and much more compatible than the one that I tested a few days ago. This is all thanks to the developer NAS, who has been tirelessly working on the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3 and porting it to the Mac operating system. The latest release now improves compatibility and performance substantially and makes many games completely playable. While this build has not been merged into the CI, which is the continuous integration, it has been distributed by NAS and you can find it on their YouTube channel where they test the performance of RPCS3 with several games, including Persona 5, Project Diva F Second, as well as Tekken Tag Tournament 2, with hugely improved performance compared to the build that I tested before. So today I'm going to show you how to download and install this build and get it working on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to NASA's YouTube video. So this build is available as an artifact and it'll be one of the links underneath their YouTube video. So if we click on this link here, which is the api.cirrus-ci.com link, I'm going to click on this now and then download this build of RPCS3. In the future, once the Mac operating system port of RPCS3 is merged correctly, then I'll update my link in the description of my video. So please check this if this changes in the future. So here we're going to click on this link and this is going to prompt us to download this RPCS3 DMG file. So here we're going to press save and OK. So I'm going to go to my finder and then go to my downloads folder and then I'm going to double click on the RPCS3 file. Then we're going to double click on the RPCS3.dmg. And then what we're going to do is to drag the RPCS3 icon into the applications folder and this will install this emulator. So in our applications folder, I'm going to double click on RPCS3. If you have this cannot be opened issue, what you can do is to hold the control key and then click on RPCS3 and then press the open button here. And that's going to give us this different prompt. I'm going to press the open button here. So when we get to this page here, what we're going to do is to click, I have read the quick start guide, and then I'm going to press do not show again, and then press continue. Then here it's warning us that this is not an official RPCS3 release. We're going to use this build anyway and press yes. So now we have the RPCS3 build open. And now what I'm going to do is to install the firmware. So what I'm going to do is to leave a link to the firmware in the description. And then we're going to be taken to this PlayStation.com website. And what we're going to do is scroll down to here and we're going to find this blue button. Here we're going to click Download PS3 Update. If you ever have an issue getting this link to open, what you can do is Control click and then Save Link As and then you'll be able to get this file. So we're downloading the PS3 updat.pup and press OK. If your browser says that there is a potential security risk, all you need to do is go ahead and click on it and then click Allow Download. If you're on Chrome, you would be pressing the Keep button on the bottom left of the screen. So once this 197 megabyte file is downloaded, what we're going to do is to go back into RPCS3. Then we're going to click on File and then click Install Firmware. Then we're going to go to our Downloads folder, press OK here to allow access, and then we're going to select our ps 3 updatepup and press Open. So now it's saying that the PS3 firmware has been installed. Now press OK. Now let this compile the PPU modules. So now that process is complete, we're going to make sure that we have a controller attached. So in the previous build I had, I had to use keyboard bindings, but now we have the ability to use a controller. I suggest using the DualShock 4 controller as this is the one that I've tested. To pair a controller, all we need to do is to go to our Bluetooth settings, and then we can add a controller. And what we're going to do is to go into the pad settings in RPCS3. And here we're going to just double check that we have the correct settings here. I'll be using a DualShock 4. And we can tell that this is connected because the DS4 pad number one does not say to disconnected. If we disconnect Bluetooth, then we can see that DS4 pad one says disconnected. So I'm going to be sticking with my DualShock 4 for my testing. So the next thing that we need to do is to get some games. So PlayStation 3 games are relatively simple to find online. What I suggest that you do is to use Google, type in the name of the game and then the word PS3 and space ISO, and then you'll find plenty of places to find backups of games. Alternatively, you can back up your own PlayStation 3 games. So in order to add these, what I need to do is to go and press the open button on RPCS3. Then I'm going to navigate to my external solid state drive where my games are kept. And then I'm going to add the game Demon Souls. So that the way that these file structures work is that when you double click on this Demon Souls folder, it also contains the subfolder PS3 underscore game and then PS3 underscore update. So this is the folder that we need to be clicking on. We're going to press open here. And then this is going to go ahead and open the game straight away. So this process is called compiling PPU modules. This has to be run every time you run a game for the first time. 
So before we run a game, I would suggest that you refer to this set of tips and instructions that the developer NAS has left for running PS3 games through RPCS3 on the macOS port. So here I'm just going to change my graphics settings and I'm going to config. So what NAS suggests is that we use the PPU decoder LLVM, which is on by default, and then the SPU decoder ASMJIT. So here we're going to select recompiler ASMJIT. So the other option that we have to disable is we go to advanced and we have to disable on disk shader cache. So click the tick button here and then press save. And also some games are gonna require specific settings. So I'm trying to run Demon Souls. If I go to the Demon Souls wiki, what you'll find is that we have specific settings for resolution scale threshold. So I'm gonna do is configure this now so that we have the correct resolution scale threshold. We're gonna want 640 by 640 in this instance. So just gonna adjust this to the correct amount. If you have any issue with this, you can use the mouse wheel to get the correct number. And also this game has an issue which I encountered in my previous testing where we have missing graphics in game and that's fixed by enabling right color buffers. So you're gonna turn on right color buffers. So the main thing to be aware of is that if you want to change the resolution that you don't touch this default resolution. Instead, if you wanna up the resolution, you can also increase the resolution scaling here. So for example, if you wanted 1080p, you'd increase it to 150%. So here I'm going to do that. I'm going to press save. So another thing that you should do before you launch the game is to control click on the game and then go to manage game patches. And then what we can do is click only show owned games and then click download latest patches. And then if I expand this Demon's Souls section here, I can now go ahead and make some changes to the game. So for example, I'm going to click unlock FPS and also skip intro videos. Here I'm going to press save and now I'm going to launch the game. So when running a game like Demon's Souls, this is vastly improved compared to the last build where we couldn't even see any graphics. I can't seem to fix this kind of blurry character issue with the kind of artifacting in the background. However, it does look like this game can run at a solid 60 frames per second with that game patch. And I'm sure that this particular graphical glitch could be fixed quite easily in the future. Even with this glitch, you could kind of tell that this could be playable, but once that clears up, I'm sure that this is going to be a much better experience. Fortunately, there are many more games that are actually playable. I haven't been able to test out a lot of them yet. However, one of them I've tested is Persona 5. Now in the last build, this ran much slower than it did compared to now. However, here we're able to get a pretty much solid 60 FPS. So I'm testing this on my M1 Max chip. This is the version with 32 gigabytes of RAM, 32 GPU cores and 10 CPU cores. And as you can see, even in the combat sections, we're getting a pretty solid max frame rate. If you refer back to the RPCS3 video from the developer NAS, they also go through some of the games, for example, Persona 5 as well. However, they're running on a MacBook Air 2020 with the original M1 chip. And they're also reaching a 30 FPS cap. I'm presuming this is because they haven't applied the 60 FPS game patch to this game. However, if any of you test this out, please let me know whether it's the original M1 chip or the M1 Pro. I've also tested the game Tekken Tag Tournament 2, which also ran really slowly on the last build, but here we're getting a pretty much solid 60 FPS. Now you might notice there are some occasional graphical glitches. However, this doesn't really seem to affect the playability of the game. It feels pretty much completely solid, and I do have really high hopes for any future optimizations if these minor graphical glitches can be fixed. However, I think that in its current state, bearing in mind that this is an early alpha and a very early build of the Mac OS version of the emulator, this is really impressive considering how far into development we are. Anyway, be sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki YouTube channel. I've already posted some RPCS3 gameplay footage. Please make sure to subscribe to that channel. Please make sure to also follow the developer NAS, who I'm sure is going to be updating with more videos on RPCS3 in the future. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did like the PlayStation 3 emulation in this video, please leave a comment. Please check out my channel for other tutorial videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.